Hi friends, welcome to our video and podcast, Caffeinated Occultist, where we discuss magical workings and share our tips and tricks. I'm Cassandra Raven. And I'm Max Raven. Today we're discussing bringing magic into your everyday life. How do you bring magic into your everyday life? Well, I will have, um, for example, say a magical seal or something of that nature, a simple symbol that I will regularly interact with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be massively overt, it can be a small symbol that you have, say, next to a light switch or on the side of your uh, computer screen where you're at work or whatever it might be, depending on, obviously it's going to depend what sort of job role you're doing. Yeah. Um, if you can have it something simple, you can have it, say, on the inside of your wrist or your palm or yeah. something like that. That's going to reinforce the the thing you're trying to create. So if you've got a particular goal, you would create something for that and then have it that you're constantly interacting with it. So it refreshes it in your subconscious, not necessarily consciously. So you create a symbol. Yes. And then you do you do something to imbue that symbol with energy? I would do. I would do. And that, it, it would vary depending on the purpose that I'd be doing it for. Mm -hmm. So for example, we have a little prosperity one, um, actually, here it's the almost the other side of the camera, um, which has got a few uh, different bits and bobs, a particular herb um, with you know, your sort of expected uh, symbology in line with prosperity. So images like gold, like greens, and things like that. But it's something that um, we may not consciously look at, but every time we come and sit down at the desk or walk into the living room. It's there hanging from one of the beams. It's something mm. that we can see nice, quickly and easily. I love this because this is, for the way that I work, this works really well because I work with the subconscious mm. and I know the images and, you know, like whatever you take in visually goes straight into your subconscious. There's not really, there's no filter. So whatever your eyes are taking in, is going into your subconscious and that's going into the deeper part of your mind. So even though you're not walking into a room and looking directly at that image or symbol or item that you've placed in the room, subconsciously you know that it's there. And so it is that kind of, you know, it's programming the subconscious to go, okay, yeah, I know that's still working for me. I know that's still there and it's still giving, you can feel the energy of it anyway. Definitely. But but it's that it is that subconscious aspect to it that I think works really well. Really, really is. But although this will probably be a video in its own right about yeah, clearing out the subconscious, tunnel of the mind, etc., etc. Subscribe, maybe see more. <laughs> but um, it works both ways. You can have your positive influences, uh, and you mm. can also have your negative ones. So, for example, if you're scrolling on your for you page on Instagram or whatever it is. You might see stuff that's similar to what you've interacted with, and if you've interacted with like you know, negative things or like fails or whatever it might be, you might find that funny. But in reality, you're seeing people fall over and hurt themselves or failure, yeah. and it's repeating over and over exactly. again. Exactly. Yeah. If you're showing people succeeding or doing like amazing feats, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. To have, and that's going to reinforce the success creating something. Yeah. So. To be mindful all the time with mm. what you're bringing in to your mind is so important to me. I've, I stopped watching the news years ago, more than a decade ago, because I'm, I'm really sensitive and I know that I, I feel the emotions of whatever I see. And if I see you know, terrible things going on in the world, I really, it really affects me. And so I had to stop taking in so much. I can make up anything she believes there's you. Know, <laughs> I know. Apparently there's, there. apparently there's been a plague and a, and a war and <laughs> AI is taking over. I don't believe any of it. <laughs> it's all nonsense. The end is no. <laughs> no, really. Um, obviously, the, the important things I, I am aware of. I know things are going on. But if, I find if I take in too much of it, it really affects me on a day-to-day -day level. And I just can't. I can't tolerate it. I can't have that. So, um, so for me, bringing magic into the everyday life is about creating an environment around you that has magic in it, no matter where you are. So even in the car, mm. you, absolutely everywhere you go, you're taking it with you everywhere. And I, 
I'm not a big one for um, carrying things on my person. I don't really wear a lot of occult jewellery or carry symbolism around with me. I will tend to have one or two things. Hmm. And those are for safe travel. They're, those are the things to connect me to home when I'm away from home. And that's my that's a connection for me. So it's yeah. almost like having that connective line between wherever I am and my home. And that's important to me. But that's the thing is you can do magic everywhere. You can do. I mean, we've said this before in another video, but um, you don't need to have your altar and all your other accoutrements. If you can, yeah, do whatever you need to do. So if you're in a space which all of a sudden feels negative or something has happened, there's nothing to stop you in your mind's eye doing the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram or something in a similar ilk to clear that uh, negativity away. So yeah. it is. It's certainly doable. I think this is the thing as well with being someone who works in ritual quite strongly. Um, for me, it's about n knowing the motions or I can go through the motions in my mind and it's just as potent as if I'm doing it full out in a room. You know, if, if I've got a wand and if, I don't really kind of use many things like that. Mm. But if I, if I were to set up an altar and use all the incense and, you know, facilitate all of those things that I may use, I can still be anywhere and have that in my mind, recreate it in my mind and not have to actually move or do anything that gives away what I'm doing in my mind. And that I think is quite powerful as well because you can create the same energy but not have to go through the motions. It very much is and that sort of goes into ceremonial magic where you're doing the same ritual um, over and over again and mm. it can be you know, something very, very simple or it can be a simple protection one. So if you're doing that every single day, where it's something simple, you're lighting a candle, you burn some incense, you say a few words, yeah. but it's something to instill confidence or it's something yeah. to you know help deal with stress or whatever mm. it might be. That has been so ingrained in your subconscious that when you need it, you can go through the motions in your mind to recreate that energy. Yeah, and do anything that you feel like you that is good for you to take magic with you wherever you go so if that's putting crystals in your bra then fine if that works for you then do it i think you know it, it everybody works differently and there's no right and wrong way but i know people that need to carry stuff with them oh definitely i mean and you know i know so many women <laughs> that go around with a bra full of crystals that's great you know if that if that's what you need to do do it I couldn't do rocks in my pants. <laughs> there's a joke there somewhere. Yeah, isn't I'm it? sure there is. <laughs> I was saying there's there's one thing that I do want to do, but this is more of a joke. It's you know, having a voodoo doll in the car when someone cuts you off, you pull up <laughs> next to them and you pull it out and start poking it. Although it's a bit difficult to do while you're driving. Yeah, pins and driving don't mm. really go that well together. Although I would love to see the other people's faces. <laughs> Although that's just silliness. Um, but uh, but yes, yeah, some people do like to carry stuff, and there will be certain times where I might carry something so if there's been a certain situation that's had to have some sort of magical intervention or where I've needed extra support mm. or if it's a I'm going to use an example where um, I was going into a place where I had had a negative experience in the past um, and I'd had to work towards to break the connection to that situation um, at that point I had taken something from the ritual that was done to help break that connection with me to tie myself back to that situation where that tie was broken as an extra support. Turned out it was absolutely fine, but that was an example of a talismanic magic. Mm. We'll have to do a video about that too and talk about the kinds of things that you can create mm, definitely, to do definitely. that. I think that would be interesting. So guys, thank you so much for watching or listening. Um, please like and subscribe. And most importantly, please, if you're listening to this on the podcast, leave a review on the podcast for us and let us know what you'd like to hear us talking about next time. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Stay magical. <laughs>